working our way through this lab today, um, whereby we had a capacitor 0.18 microfarad and different series resistors we had to put in line. And um, then towards the end of the lab, we had to work out the impedances and we had to draw the phasor diagrams for each one of those different values of resistance with the capacitors. Um, just scroll back up there to show you the uh, The actual circuit, I'm not intending it to be super clear on the video, but basically just an oscilloscope with two channels, um, a signal source at 825 hertz, resistor, capacitor, and then measuring VC and measuring V supply uh, at this point here. So in the first part of the um, uh, lab, of course, two volts peak to peak and uh, 825 hertz frequency and 560 ohms, 0.18 microfarads. And I've explained that as this lab was set up for a basic electrical class, um, the capacitor doesn't allow uh, current to flow through it. So how does current actually flow in the circuits? Because the AC voltage, which is changing uh, direction um, every cycle, so 825 times a second it changes direction, is charging the capacitor and then discharging and recharging the capacitor in the opposite polarity. So there's always charge taking place in the circuit as the alternating current is continually changing from positive to negative. So we get this AC current flow happening in the circuit. And uh, how much current flow do we get? Well, it comes down to the capacitor itself and using the rate of change equation, based on the frequency, we have to work out the capacitive reactance, Xc, for that capacitor. And that's 1 on 2 pi Fc. And uh, I've run the maths on that, and we get an Xc of 1,072 ohms. And then point number one, I've said that is, a circuit like this, we, we always have to work out the capacitive reactance first. And then second, we have to work out the impedance. Um, I did do another video today that was basic geometry, Pythagoras, and a bit of trigonometry. And uh, I've also made a video using the polar function on several different calculators. We can use this equation, Pythagoras, to work out the impedance, but if you learn how to use your calculator with the rectangular polar uh, translation, you can put in your coordinates and you can get the uh, impedance and you can also get the phase angle of the circuit as well, all in one hit. However, we will come back later on in this small video and look at how we work out that phase angle as well. Number three, we have to find the current. Now that we know the impedance of the circuit, we can use the input voltage, which was two volts peak to peak, divide that by the impedance, and then that will give us the current flowing in the circuit. Number four, once we have the current, number four, we can work out the voltage across the resistor and we can work out the voltage across the capacitor. And I've gone ahead, I've worked everything out in peak to peak. So I've worked out a peak to peak current, 1.65 milliamps peak to peak. Hence, using that same peak to peak current, that gives me the voltage across the resistor in peak to peak, voltage across the capacitor in peak to peak. No need to complicate things and do in RMS because after all, if um, the students go back to the oscilloscope and they can check this on the screen because we have peak to peak measured directly on the oscilloscope screen. I'll move the camera at this point to take in the other board in the classroom. On the other board with this video, uh, we got to point number four, where we work out the voltage across the resistor and the voltage across the capacitor. Now we take this whole procedure to the last step, step five, or well, maybe the second last step, uh, and we do the phasor diagram for it. Uh, in the phasor diagram, uh, remembering that a phasor rotates counterclockwise, and our reference uh, is always set at zero on this part of the graph, and knowing that we want the current in the series circuit to be the reference vector, uh, that will also be the voltage across the resistor. So the voltage across the resistor is plotted here. Uh, the voltage across the resistor 
uh, was in fact 926 millivolts. The voltage across the capacitor is always 90 degrees out of phase with the voltage across the resistor. Uh, and the voltage across the capacitor in this case was 1.77 volts. So 1.77 volts plotted down here. 926.926 of a volt plotted across here and um, that's all well and good to have VC and VR but it doesn't give us VS and VS is going to happen somewhere in between. Well of course VS is going to be the hypotenuse uh, in a triangle plotted against this side <coughs> and this side and uh, like I did in another video, if I bring across this side to here, we make a, a rectangle out of this. VC I can translate to here. VR I can translate down to here. That'll be the same. And then we can find this angle theta in here. And the angle theta in a circuit like this represents the difference between the supply voltage and the circuit current. So what's coming from the signal generator? We know the length of that phaser already. Uh, the length of that phaser was, in our experiment today, 2 volts peak to peak. Uh, if we didn't know what that was, we'd be able to, uh, well, we could work it out with trigonometry, uh, or we could even use a ruler, and we could measure it if we did everything to scale on a diagram like the one that I've drawn. Uh, to work out the angle theta then, uh, we know that theta is the opposite over the adjacent, and then tan theta is going to be VC divided by VR. So here's VC and here's VR. So to find out uh, theta, here's the two voltages I have to use, VC being 1.77 volts, VR 926 millivolts. Theta then becomes inverse tan multiplied by this ratio, and that takes us to 62.3 degrees. And that is the angle there again. Again, the phase angle in the circuit, theta, is the difference between the supply voltage and the circuit current.